Hello, dirty old bastards. Welcome to the 13th, yes, lucky 13th episode of Dirty Old Bastards, B.O.B. What the Fuck Podcast, WTF Cast. We are here as your hosts. We've got Josh, 83 USMC. Hello, bitches. And of course, uh, uh, myself here, Two Steel Balls, who is a little under the weather. But uh, Josh told me he's got the right cough medicine for me. We just got to get together. Yeah, it's KY version. It's going <laughs> to go down smooth. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, now we've got a, a special guest with us. That's uh, Exile. Say hello, Exile. Hey, guys, what's up? He is Good joining to have us. You with us. Yeah. Very happy to have you with us. He's joining us from the Call of Duty side, and we'll have some input and peanut galleryness. I don't know if that's a, a word, but I'm, I'm going to make it one now. Be prepared, Exile. I'm coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, well so we're going to roll right on into here with uh, uh, Josh. Uh, you know, it's been about a month since our last podcast. and I apologize for that, uh, DOB land. Um uh, two steel's been yanking on my crank to get to get on to uh, recording one of our podcasts and do some of our gaming commentary. So I do want to apologize. It's just been a little crazy on this side of the planet with me with the job and uh, being married now. You know, it's amazing how uh, how uh, I don't know what's worse. You know, I'm having a new wife or having a new job. You know, uh, in terms of uh, the busy aspect of it too. So we're gonna have some fun today. Uh, cover a lot of stuff um, and. Uh, Hopefully, again, we can get this going uh, consistently. So, again, I want to apologize to everybody. My fault. Yeah, absolutely it is. Absolutely. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's, it's everybody in this clan. <laughs> <laughs> everybody understands how busy everybody gets, including myself. So, mm-hmm. it's, it's uh, I'm glad we're able to get together and, and make this magic. Oh, yeah. So. It's, uh, it's, we're going to have some spirit fingers. Uh, fireworks are going to fire, uh, explode in the sky, and we'll put together a solid performance for everybody. And it looks like it'll be a... Uh, to start off our 13th episode, we're having an exile sandwich. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> Two PF3s and a Call of Duty in the middle. I, 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 I'm fully on board with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's go <laughs> right on into uh, clan news. Let's talk about the upcoming tournaments, Josh. Clan. Sure. No problem. Um, again, you're just catching up and whatnot. Uh, looks like the Black Ops, or excuse me, the uh, Battlefield side. Uh, is having their sixth tournament, and that's happening uh, the 15th of this month. Uh, and then shortly thereafter, literally the day afterwards, uh, Black Ops 2, with it being new, uh, is having only their second one, but that's on the 16th. Um, so it should be a good time. I'm assuming everybody's welcome. You just have to sign up. Uh, I'm assuming there's a date uh, that's going to be final, a finalized version of it. So, you know, get your names in and everything. Uh TSB, do you have any uh, news or updates on what kind of prizes we can expect that have been passed down from Ryan, uh, all those guys that are actually putting this together? Yeah, I've got a little bit of update on on what the uh, prizes are going to be in the initial ones. Um, on, on that Black Ops tournament, I just want to make sure everybody knows it's going to be, uh, uh, looks like it's going to be tournament number one of the zombies. Uh, it's a zombie tournament, too, so that'll be that'll be cool. So, that'll be um, interesting. Yeah, and, and it looks like Mood is going to be, uh, kind of mood elevator for everybody who didn't know who mood was. <laughs> he's he's helping out with with running these events as the event coordinator. <clears throat> so or uh, public relations, excuse me. So yeah, there's a couple days before you should be signing up for it. And if you don't know how, well, it's really easy. You need to go to the main page on the lower left hand side. There's events, event lists, and click on the little calendar. You'll see it there. Sign up and please. Attend if you sign up. Don't uh, blow hot up air any. Don't blow any hot air up anybody's ass that don't ask for it. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's, I know that's uh, been a kind of a uh, an Achilles heel of certain uh, tournaments that we've hosted, but I've heard nothing but positive things. People have been, you know, following through with their sign up. So just keep it going, Dob. Uh, I know that uh, the staff and everybody puts in a great deal of work with this. You know, and I know Mood probably has to. <laughs> 
he's going to love me for this. Stop hitting the pipe there for about 15, 20 minutes so he can type it out and everything. So <laughs> going to appreciate the hard work that these guys put in. Uh, again, just show up, have fun, and uh, game responsibly, right? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, and some of the prizes that you asked, uh, right off the bat, you get a tournament ribbon and some other merchandise that might be, uh, be able to hand out here for the, for the top contenders here. I mean, we'll get that clarified with, uh, with the inimical, who also is, uh, who's back. Um, yes, and, and grand return. The grand return. And, uh, he's, he's a busy, busy man, so. Well, I also heard something about, you know, since he was coming back, you know, the rumor mills were flying. Uh, that within these tournaments, one of the prizes that isn't being talked about as, uh, as much is, uh, I think Ryan's going to pose in like a, a European Borat style bikini. Is that true? Is that true? Uh, you just let the cat out of the bag, dude. Damn it. It was a surprise? Oh, crap. Yeah, it was a surprise. And, and even oh. on top of that, well, you know, the reason why he, during his absence, the reason why he was absent, turns out, is because his love for interpretive dance. He he was in the butter he was in the butterfly where he actually comes out of cocoon. Cocoon was a trash bag. He comes out. It was magnificent. I've seen it and I will post the video. Wow. I mean, so he pretty much tried to copy Napoleon Dynamite. All mm-hmm. right. Okay. Absolutely. I bet you he was solid at it too. I mean, Ryan has those flexible hips and loose butt cheeks. <laughs> he nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome back, big man. Happy to have you. Uh, finally, you know, bossing us around again. <laughs> Yeah, he's back. So we'll we'll make sure to look busy. <laughs> <laughs> it's all in front. Probably. Yeah, I know, I know. So, anyways, yeah. So um, let's see what else is going. Other good things that are going on would be I have to commend, and that's that's another reason why Exile is here. Let's commend the uh, the media team. Now that I am, there's a big announcement. The uh, the director of the media team, um, or the coordinator. I I can't thank enough of the uh, media team for making such a rebound. And it's not them. It just comes down to. Um, involvement and everybody here all just need all they needed was uh, I guess literally like the light switch turned on everybody's producing and so let the floodgates open on the other staff members uh, requests and for resources if you guys need uh, banners and flyers and uh, videos and, and other things of that sort that's media related we are here to help so really good things can't can't stop thanking the uh uh, media team. So Exile, that's one thing you're here is that you're one of the newest members. So welcome and congratulations. Thank you, thank you. So. Yeah, I can't say it enough either. I mean, I know that that was a, a kind of a, a spot in which the clan wasn't as solid, uh, but as of late, it has been you know banners, uh, uh, certain uh, graphic designs on the, on the website, uh, requests being fulfilled. Um, and even with the uh, recruit videos, everything that has to do with all that stuff, um, you guys and the media team have really just been killing it. You know, it's, there has not been a dead a dead time uh, without something being dropped. And I think that was something important that we were lacking for a while when I first joined up. So, again, I want to thank you personally, too. So, great job, you guys. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. So, yeah, what a, it's all about that team. It's good mm-hmm. stuff coming out. All right. So um, other than that, we've got uh, we. Hit, <clears throat> I know the recruiting team had a uh, uh, big meeting today, right after the staff, and we'll, we'll wait to hear what's what's going on, uh, an update on news and so forth. But that kind of leads into uh, something we discovered, and that's that's the need for BF3 NCOs. So Josh, talk about a little bit about your experience being the lead NCO prior sure. to your your now, and congratulations on your. I'm your senior NCO. Yes, uh, I'm in charge of everybody. Beware. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, BF3 NCOs, um, especially for the game, that's, it's been out for, uh, you know, November 2011 was when it actually dropped live, um, is a well-oiled, streamlined machine. That, With that being said, however, um, we're still in need of uh, solid NCOs. Overall, since, you know, the, the players that game with BF3, uh, they all understand uh, the timelines, the structure that we want to perform at, uh, and everything that has to do with just having played a game for as long as it's been out for, <clears throat> excuse me, that what the, the new NCO should expect is, you know, a smooth transition. Uh, people understand what you're trying to accomplish, uh, what you're doing, etc. cetera. Um, uh, I wanted to touch on something, though, um, that... 
Um, we need to keep up with our recruitments, with our approvals or not approves of uh, applicants, and keep uh, the amount of players attached to that side of this clan strong. Uh, looking at the approval, or excuse me, the application page on DOB, you know, we have over 80 approved uh, at this time. Now, I, I don't dabble in, um, you know, putting those gentlemen into the admin page and trial status, etc. Uh, I don't know how often that's getting done, but I do understand that we need to get that done. Because as of right now, overall, we have 272 registered users for the clan. Um, or excuse me, 329, wow. Uh, and, you know, and 321 of those are, you know, desperate men. And eight of them are extremely desperate women. So <laughs> let's keep... Uh, Let's keep that number rising, guys. You know, we've always been one of the top five clans overall. Uh, how smooth the things run, stuff gets done. Uh, but we just do need uh, somebody to volunteer. I'll happily train them. Again, it's not as difficult um, once you get used to it. It's just a lot of work. It takes some dedication, you know. So that being said, that might turn off somebody. But um, it's not an impossible position by any means. You do uh, get help if you need it. Um, but we just need to have a solid leadership structure in place on the Battlefield 3 side. Uh, more than, I'm not saying we don't now, but uh, we just need that lead. And then the, the NCOs, and we're good to go. I mean, there's still a lot of meat left on that bone um, in terms of <laughs> game and stuff. So. All right. Well, thank you, you former lead NCO. Um, yeah, there's always support. So, And uh, and thanks for volunteering to, to help train so forth. Um, but <clears throat> there's always room for, for NCOs. Exactly. So that, that, that's the, it's a backbone to getting people in and solidifying. We've got the recruitment that does the first phase. NCOs kind of do a recruitment, but also follow up and then help hold everybody accountable, make sure they're, they're meeting our, our goal, goals and guidelines and so forth. Anyways, enough on that topic. <laughs> I've beaten that, uh, I've beaten it to, to a pulp. So, you know what I think we're going to do is, a, is we're going to do a little interview with, with Exile first before sure. we, um, banter on the gaming news so we'll step aside here and uh impromptu questions to exile uh for those of you who don't know exile is on the call of duty uh, black ops 2 side well call of duty side specifically just joined our media team as mentioned earlier and so exile tell me tell us the listeners um you know what what kind of motivated you to be interested in becoming staff well, um, I've been working on videos for a while, and uh, I worked with a couple videos with Sheriff, and she mentioned to me about the position that I could possibly get, and uh, it's been kind of wanting to get it out there a little bit more and help out as much as possible. Um, so basically, all the stuff that I was working on with her, um, the opportunity with, when I Skyped with you guys and you guys let me do it, kind of got motivated to do a little bit more with it and I'm actually working on a few videos now hopefully I'll have them up within tonight or tomorrow um, no guarantees yet uh, just basically getting a little bit more motivated cool okay so you're, you're working on the future elements of uh, I think you're recording and also doing uh, uh, compilation for, for Black Ops right you'd be able to record correct yes fantastic fantastic so specifically is it you know you 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 wanted to become staff member to give a little bit more back, give a little bit more into the clan. Is it? Uh, um, I mean, obviously you like, it and you volunteered for it. Oh yeah. Um, uh, like I said, uh, whenever she told me that I could possibly do it, um, I thought I could help out as much as I could. I know I'm not like pro at doing it yet. I've only been recording and editing for about maybe eight or nine months. Um, but I, I think so far it's it's been it's been interesting. Um, I'm getting better each time, and hopefully, uh, like the new videos I'm working on now, like I said, uh, they're not going to be completely edited. They're going to be more like live game feed. But I'm gonna get more into the editing side. I'm using Sony Vegas right now. So I'm using 12, which is kind of new to me. I've, I've used 10 pretty much since I've recorded. So hopefully, uh, I start making stuff and everybody starts sending requests. Because if anybody wants videos made, they can contact me as well, and I hope they know that, so I can help make videos for everybody and have more on the media side. Well, there you go. Thank you. You're already opening. Like I said earlier, the floodgates are open for resource requests. Thanks for your help, man. No problem. Josh, you got something to Exile? 
Uh, well, I was going to ask, um, you know, obviously it's easier to uh, record Call of Duty games, but uh, do you have a capture card? Are you available to uh, record uh, Battlefield 3? Well, um, I was actually talking to, uh, I, th- I think it was Surf or somebody about it the other day during a meeting, and uh, I thought about actually going to pick up, because I used to have Battlefield and Medal of Honor, I had both of them. Okay. Um, I thought about picking them up again, and yes, I am using a capture card right now, but as of the 1st of January, I'll be ordering my new, new PVR, and uh, I've also talked to Surf about it, and I'm going to send her my capture card. I'm just going to give it to her so she can actually record and edit, because I'm not, I'm, it's going to collect dust, so I'm just going to send it to her, and uh, we'll be able to kind of collaborate on a lot of things together. Perfect. Yeah, it's just, uh, you know, I, I, I get that it's a lot easier to do it on one side of our... Uh, our clan in terms of game than it is on the other, but uh, we just I think we need just as much material as possible from Battlefield as we do from Call of Duty. So that's all. But I appreciate the uh, the fact that you're going out and you know committing your own resources to you know uh, upgrading your equipment. So again, thank you very much. Oh, you're Absolutely. welcome. Absolutely. We're even looking at uh, this was discussed during the last media was uh, we can get funds and we'll make sure he's got the latest games for the capture card. Also, Bobby Bobcat he can do recording as well and. I think I'm blanking on one more. Maybe it was Malice could do... Uh, oh, it was Darst. That's what it was. Darst has got a capture card, and he's kind of untapped as far as uh, his resource or his availability. Um, Darst, uh, if you hear this, uh, send me a send me a uh, game invite. We can uh, teabag hasten until the cows come home, and it can be recorded for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make sure it just loops over and over and over. Yeah. It's just payback for how many times he's done it to us. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, well, uh, yeah, welcome, Exile, and, and uh, welcome to the team again, once, once again. So. Thanks, guys. <clears throat> so now you get to, uh, let's, let's, let's talk about some gaming news, okay? <clears throat> and then we're going to end, we're going to end with uh, talking about BF3 DLC, the latest one, and, uh, and then Black Ops 2, we're going to get Josh's uh, update slash review. So. Cracking the knuckles for that one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, uh, a couple of the games that, uh, <clears throat> that are coming out soon would be, uh, was it Sly Cooper? Thieves of Time? <clears throat> now, this game here coming up next, Dust 514, was, uh, <laughs> that, that, we're actually at one point on our plan thinking about supporting this game. Mm-hmm. Did you get to try that out? Um, I never did. Uh, I threw in my, uh, <clears throat> request for a beta key a long time ago when that beta first dropped. Uh, but I was unable. Uh, I guess I did it a little too late. Um, I uh, I agree so far. Uh, again, I mean, it's just beta, so a lot of changes can be made. But from just the reviews and opinions I've heard from some people around the clan, as well as uh, the Internet, which doesn't lie, <laughs> I've heard uh, that you'll either love it or you'll either hate it. Um, mm-hmm. With it being a free-to-play, last I heard... Um, I, I'm not a huge fan of that type simply because, you know, you can get the wallet warriors out there um, and they can just dump just tons of money in there and just create like a lopsided experience. So I don't know how they're going to limit that, if they're going to limit that. Um, but overall, I mean, I've heard both sides of the story. It's great. It's bad. It sucks. It's wonderful. So I guess we'll just have to wait, wait uh, make up our minds when it actually drops. Um, yeah. Do you know when that's actually going to be? Well, I have, and I uh, said the same thing that uh, Josh said. It was <clears throat> obviously beta. I needed some love, but um, you know, some of the stuff I'm looking, I've seen here. Uh, it was supposed to be released December 1st, but uh, wow. I'll take a look again because... Anyways, it looks like a PlayStation version of Halo, so uh, that was my first comment. First 15 minutes, I was like, oh, wait a minute here. Mm-hmm. They're, they're trying to do like a Battlefield Halo thing, so with the different classes and so forth. Well, did they ever did they ever perfect, you know, the cross-platform gaming? Because technically that's a PC game. I thought they were trying to do PC, Xbox, and PlayStation all under this, like somehow kind of get those servers to uh, work <coughs> together and players can play that way. I don't know. Is that still an option? That that was supposed to be. I remember, I'm thinking way back, episode maybe three or four with Grandpa mm-hmm. and Ty Static. And it was brought up that yeah, you're supposed to be able to have that inner that involvement between the zombies. On the PC side, it was more of an omniscient view, or you're controlling large fleets. And then the PS3 and Xbox would be on the, would ground force 
and maybe okay. one of them would be in space. So uh, now it's not that expensive because it's supposed to be, uh, um, let's see here, what is it, a, a, a perk purchase base. So you don't have to pay, basically buy um, the game, but you have to buy all the other gadgets and so forth. So Of course. Yeah. you got to make their money somehow. Yeah, yeah. it looks like, yeah, server swarm Saturday, Saturday 1st, December 1st, 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Time. We've already mm-hmm. missed that, but uh, anyways... So that's that's one, and then we've got uh, Devil May Cry, that's coming out. Um, yeah, that game, I, I, man, that was such a that was such an original impact franchise when it when it came out. You know, obviously, probably over ten years ago um, on the older gen systems. Mm-hmm. You know, Dante and jumping between hell and earth, and just the fighting the fighting system, the engine in that game, um, and just the background. You know, who, who Dante is. Uh, that game was just so much fun. Um, uh, I'm not certain about the new Devil May Cry because I'm looking at the official Capcom website, and uh, Dante looks like a, a boy bander now. I mean, he always mm-hmm. kind of had that vibe, but now he really looks like he's bordering between liking the wiener or liking the veg. You know, I don't know. You know, and, and, and for me personally, I, I really want the old Dante to come back with the white hair and <laughs> you know, just a super badass uh, dude that he was. So. Yeah. We'll yeah, he, he does, you're right. He does. I'm looking at a picture of him. He looks like he's some, he belongs in Twilight Saga. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and I, st- I stand corrected. The release date is January 15th of 2013. So. Okay. So though that game was pushed back then because yes. it was originally December release. So yeah. just finalizing some stuff. But that is definitely one I'm going to pick up. Exile. What else? What else do you play, man? What else have you? Any of these games you've played in the past? Um. Well, I used to play Devil May Cry all the time. Um. Recently. Uh. It's been just kind of first-person shooters. I've tried a few different games. Um, I got my hands on Borderlands 2 not too long ago. It's not too bad, actually. Um, like I said, it's, that's about it. I tried Crisis, um, the new Crisis. Didn't yeah, really care for it. That's, that's out, yeah. Is it Crisis 3? Yeah. I've seen uh, Borderlands, Crisis 3, and a couple other, a couple other ones that DOB members are playing. So, Wasn't Crisis 3... The brand new version, or is that the ported version of the old game from PC to console? Because I saw that a new Crisis game was coming out, and actually it was PC that you actually had to buy just for the game to perform at the minimum levels. You had to pretty much invest a substantial amount of money into a a solid computer because the thing is just like the graphics in it and the way it operates is just something above and beyond anything can uh, uh, can handle. Is that what is that the game you're speaking of? Might be the previous crisis because the, the current one, uh, sorry, the, the future one's coming out in February 2013. So okay, that's the one I was talking too. about then. Yeah, because that, that, that game was this. Oh, I'm not a PC gamer, but if I was, I would definitely be buying that. It looks, it look, looks just amazing. Yeah, and they are bringing it on PS3, so there you go. PS, mm-hmm. yeah, PS, PS3 and Xbox availability. So, okay, and uh, probably another one people are excited about that would be Dead Space 3. So oh, I I couldn't finish the second one. <laughs> I don't know why. It's just that the game it, it's scary and shit. You know, no, I felt like no. a fucking sissy trying to <laughs> like hide behind my couch, making sure my dogs are in the room. I'm gonna come back to that. You know, oh no. But no, that, those games are uh, violent. They're wonderful. Uh, well, the big news on uh, the Dead Space Three is the fact that uh, you're gonna have a lot more customization options. Uh, with his workshop in terms of like his armor, weapons, and stuff like that. It's still a survival horror game, which, you know, I, if they just turned it to action, I think it would be uh, much better, but it, it would lose a certain uh, aspect to it because, again, you know, limited ammunition, uh, overpowered enemies, and stuff like that. It's kind of the, the great thing about it and the fact that the graphics and storyline are, are a pretty solid game or a solid franchise. I'm happy that they're continue going on because they pretty much could have stopped it too mm-hmm. but uh, you know that cash cow again kind of like uh, certain games I don't like uh, hopefully with it being rushed uh, into uh, less than a year since the last one came out um, that it doesn't suffer that's my only concern with that yeah no that'll be coming out soon but I'm, I'm with you man any game I gotta wear a diaper with I'm, I'm <laughs> I can't play it man it's not happening uh, it's a tough one to uh, get through all the time just just you know, when you're least expecting, it's it's a wonderful game. Whoever uh, whoever writes them, you know, uh, does a solid job. 
So yeah, yeah definitely gonna definitely gonna peruse, uh, peruse that one when it comes out too. Yeah, and if we've got any DOB fans in Europe, your uh, Dead Space Three will be out February eighth. In the U.S., it'll be out February fifth. So, All right, what else we got going on here? We have uh, Aliens, uh, Colonial Marines. That looked. Uh, that looked pretty cool. I saw the preview on PSN. That looked uh, it's another game I'm plugging up to wear a diaper to. But uh. yep, and it follows the it follows Aliens two kind of leading into Aliens three, the actual movie franchise. So a lot of a lot of stuff. If you've seen those movies and played the, or have seen those characters, you know Ripley, Hudson, all those guys. Bill Paxton, my favorite character in those movies by <laughs> far. I love Bill Paxton's uh, rendition of a Marine in Aliens two. Mm-hmm. You'll have a good time again. It's uh, I don't know if it's an over-the-shoulder shooter uh, or first person. Um, I should probably find that out, but uh, I don't think there's anybody that doesn't like those movies. So how can this game fail? You know, unless they totally fuck it up. No, it uh, it it looks first person and it looks it looks pretty good, pretty intense. So, and then the last one that I want to discuss would be the Grand Theft Auto uh, Vice City. Will be coming out if you've got an iPad or iPhone or an Android device. Will be coming out on those devices. That's cool. But also, PlayStation is looking at doing uh, Grand Theft Auto Vice City and San Andreas, um, all for the upcoming BF3, or BF3 GTA 5. God, I'm kidding. Everything all like that. <laughs> um, GTA 5 coming out in spring of 2013, which is seriously being considered. Uh, as a clan sponsored game. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see. I think Actually, it should be. It's a super popular franchise. There's there probably just no limit to the amount of people that would, you know, like to be attached to it. Um, which just, I don't know any of the game specifics in terms of multiplayer. I understand it's just, you don't even need to play with a friend, but how much fun would it be to be able to knock out a hooker and then have your buddy drag her into a car to replenish your health? You know, that would just be a great time. So I'm assuming they'll have some sort of multiplayer variation to it. We'll just have to wait and see. I didn't think you were going to talk about your bachelor party. All right. So, <clears throat> so yeah, GTA Five will be coming out in spring 2013. Uh, hey, Exile, it was discussed this morning during the staff meeting that, you know, in members that think uh, we should uh, we should be sponsoring a specific type of game, um, you know, we definitely support the the thought process and, and always are open minded to what games we can support. <clears throat> Not only are we going to support different games, but there's a possibility we might be talking about another console, which I'll get into in just a second here. Yeah. So it was kind of thought of this morning during the staff that <clears throat> okay, we got to come up with a magic number or the minimum amount of, of members that we will need to support a game. So, Josh, let's talk about, uh, just for a second here, that, you know, we, there's a possibility we may be supporting uh, Xbox 360. Yeah, I'm, I, I, I think it's a great idea. You know, it opens up uh, avenues for monster franchises such as Halo. You know, that that the ga- that game alone can support two, three hundred players by itself. I mean, that's a super pop, super popular platform as I don't have to really get into it, but uh, um, I think, you know, the only way to really truly expand into something is to take a chance, and I don't consider Xbox as a, as a risky operation, you know? I mean, it's been around longer than the PlayStation. There's, there's, there's more actual gamers on Xbox, unfortunately. I'm a mm-hmm, mm-hmm. PlayStation guy, but, you know, Grow or die, so to speak. You can never become stagnant. So uh, I hope that we can come up with a with a with a plan, um, and just not just not you know go head first into it without thinking, but you know come up with something strong, strategic planning uh, that we can get Xbox going. Because again, when the next gen system comes out, which is going to be before the new PlayStation version next year, I'm assuming uh, if you're going off that five to seven year generation cycle for consoles that uh, it's going to be just, uh, it's going to be the peaked uh, platform, excuse me, the peaked uh, uh, gaming console for a while. So I think we need to get the foot in the door and pretty quickly on that. Absolutely. <clears throat> it is coming. I have my sources say, which are unreliable and high as a kite, probably, <laughs> probably at uh, 2013's E3, they will, they will probably have something to come up to bring to the table, so... Yeah. I mean, everybody's seen screenshots on it and uh, renditions 
uh, renderings, I should say, excuse me, of what it can look like, as well as the PlayStation 4. So, you know, all that stuff's coming down the pipe. You know, I think, I mean, PlayStation's good. We have a, a solid clan here with just PlayStation gamers, um, but we do need to get solidified Xbox before that happens, uh, or else we'll be left out, I think, in the rain, so to speak, and grasping at straws. So that's just a, a strong hint hint to our senior leadership. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And mark my words, maybe Josh, you might agree with me. I think Xbox will be first. Yeah, well, it, it, it will. It will. Because um, it just thought if you go off the cycle schedule, uh, Xbox 360 has been around for seven years, I believe, uh, while PlayStation 3 has only been around for about five. So oh, okay. they can actually, PlayStation could. You know, drop it first, but who knows? Um, but it's always usually the Xboxes that come, and then the Playstations afterwards because it's a pricing conflict. Um, and there's been again strong indications that these next gen systems, you know, right when they're coming out, are going to be some of the most expensive ever released. So uh, mm-hmm. save up now, guys. Save up now. Yeah, stop hoarding yourself out now. <laughs> All right. So, Josh. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. Before we get into Call of Duty Black Ops 2, which everybody is sitting here biting their nails, waiting to hear. Let's talk about the, the new DLCs. My God, Aftermath. Yeah, that That is the best DLC they've come up with to date. Nothing comes close. Um, after the somewhat failure of uh, Armored Kill, to have a DLC drop like a- uh, Aftermath, um, and then within the first five minutes of the first round I played, I knew... Uh, it was solid, uh, well-built, wonderful, huge maps. But at the same time, you know, it's not armored kill to where you could run for 20 minutes without killing somebody. Um, these aftermath maps are large, sprawling cityscapes with a thousand different avenues to, to go through them. The scavenger uh, game mode is it, it's, it's wonderful. It's like flashing back to... Nintendo 64 or GoldenEye stuff. You know, you, you yeah. start with a pistol and then you go around the map and there's weapons just randomly lying around. That is fun to another level. Um, and, you know, obviously with the tried and true conquest and rush, um, I, I gave that DLC a 10 out of 10 when I first started playing it. Um, upon, you know, obviously diving further into it, that thing is beyond a 10. That is probably... You could start a game just with those maps. Like, that could have been Battlefield 3. That and is, and just sales would have gone... I, I, I know they would have been a hell of a lot better. Yeah, yeah. That that whew, If Aftermath is like this, Endgame, it, they're really setting us up. They have, to, they have to come through because that is the best DLC they've ever put out, by far. Absolutely. I completely, 150% agree with you. I've never heard... So many of our clan members sitting in, in BF3 uh, within five minutes of gaming, all I hear is, wow. Yeah. That, so. they, they did it right. I mean, it just feels solid, everything. There's one gripe I have against it, and it's so small, but, you know, when you're when you're a veteran battlefield guy and you, you, you're you usually run engineer, you have a, a small RPG and you love, like, killing people by dropping buildings on their heads... There's so many buildings capable of that, but they, they figured out that there'd just be like everybody be shooting up at all the fault over <laughs> buildings and nobody would be accomplishing anything. So, you know, they took that aspect out, but I really, uh, everything else is just absolutely 100% just solid, solid. Okay, so let's talk about one thing you hate and okay. uh, Exile. So <laughs> it's going to be you and Exile. Let's talk about Black Ops 2. So uh, you can go first, brother. I go ahead. <laughs> tell you us what you love. On it? Yeah, tell us what you love about it. Tell us, tell us the uh, the high points. Well, um, for one, I love the score streaks. I think it's a good idea. Um, the guns are a lot more solid than the regular than the original Black Ops. Um, I'm a Black Ops fan. Not really a big fan of Modern Warfare, but. Um, I, like I said, uh, all around, I think it's more of a solid game. The map's a little bit bigger. Um, that's kind of the pros, I guess, about it. And some of the cons is the connection interrupted thing still hits you. Um, the lag is still there. I understand it's a new game, and all the new Call of Duty's do the same thing every time. But um, that's probably the worst thing I think about it so far. 
I as a as a BF3 or not BF3 as a Battlefield veteran, I guess I could call myself. I am I am jealous, and I've got it on the Xbox 360. I've got Modern Warfare 3. <clears throat> I'm jealous of those. Yeah, as the more and more people you kill, the more you get these perks and 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 different things to kill other people with. That is that is pretty cool. So that's that is definitely a high point. Um, I, I can't stand zombies, man. I talked about it last episode, so I just uh, I have a thing about zombies. It's just uh, mm. all right. Josh, now yes. he's into it now. <laughs> oh, heavens to Betsy. Here we go. Oh, I've been waiting to put this down on, paper, on tape for so long. I, I'm, I'm excited and nervous. All right. Well, as everybody knows, um, I before even it came out, I was an advocate against Call of Duty. Um, been playing it forever. Uh, when the company split, though, however... When Treyarch sued EA and vice versa for rights to produce games, um, that's when I think, in my opinion, the the originality flew out the window because all they were going to start doing was try to get out games as quickly as they can to outpace the other company. So when that happens, obviously you lose out on certain things. All right, right. Um, and this latest rendition of. Call of Duty, uh, regardless if it was a Modern Warfare produced by another company or Black Ops by Treyarch, uh, there wasn't anything. I, and let me preface this by saying I went in with no, with absolutely nothing negative or positive to say. I really went in playing with a, a, a flat line of expectations, and then from my gaming experience, I would go up or down. Now I hadn't played it in a long time. Um, I sold Modern Warfare three. When I directly compared it to Battlefield 3, I went out and just said, screw it, I'm done with that. So this game, obviously, I hadn't played in a while. So, of course, I was going to be really shitty at it. I was going to try to duck, but I ended up throwing grenades because I was used to the call the, or the or the Battlefield 3 controls. You know, so, again, I kept a level head about it. Um, once I started getting used to everything, I really started identifying certain points that were positive and certain points that were negative. And... In my honestly non-biased opinion, uh, when I was reviewing the game for the, the podcast, I can thoroughly say that the only people that should be buying this piece of shit should have no pubes on their dick. They should have <laughs> third grade education. They can rely on their fucking mom and dad to buy the game because this is such a broken piece of junk. There's nothing original about it. The score streaks, it's score streaks, kill streaks. There's nothing different about it. You know, you kill a lot of people or you sit around and camp in a corner and though they tell you um, if you camp, it costs less. Well, that hasn't changed because I, I attempted to do that myself to see if it was different. So you could camp, get assist kills, and just build those score streaks up. There's nothing in the game that tells me I should actually be a, an active player. And when a game relies on so much on submachine guns, because it's the, the choice weapon in those games, assault rifles are out the window. I mean, mm -hmm. why would you have sniper rifles on a bathtub map? There's nothing. <laughs> right, right. No, I, I, yeah, absolutely. And the map size could be considered bigger for Call of Duty players, but that's why it only seems that way, in my opinion, because they only give you the limit to sprint for three steps, and then you're back to, like, crawling on your knees. <laughs> it's like That's like me in real life. <laughs> <laughs> it's the slowest-paced first-person shooter I've ever played. Uh, the graphics are outdated as, as all get out. There's nothing good about that. The, the hit-to-marker detection is screwed up. You know, the... The coolest thing is you can throw a fucking knife across the map and randomly kill somebody, and people think that that requires skill, and it's all over YouTube. And like, oh, look at me, I'm the man. <laughs> Bullshit. There's no skill involved in these games. No aiming involved, no nothing. Um, the score streaks, the perks, everything is great. Uh, there's there's one positive I will say about that game is it, that it does cut, it does lose connectivity because I can. So I'm so pissed off playing it that I'll have to break the son of a bitch. You know. Um, <laughs> DLC for Battlefield is a, like a 13 out of 10. This new rendition of a piece of shit dead franchise, I give maybe a 5 out of 10. And those 4.5 points come from zombies. That's it. I'm, I'm done. I, I, it could have been a lot worse. I'm trying to keep it at a dull roar. Um, I think 
that it's not a steaming pile of shit because that's complimenting it too much. I think it's a petrified piece of dog shit that somebody like dug out of the ground, slapped a fucking box on, and started telling it. That's it. I'm done. Fuck Call of Duty. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's probably a little more mild than everybody anticipated, but yeah, no, that's that's good. That's good. <clears throat> so, uh, so should I go out and buy it? Uh, no, I, I mean, it's <laughs> million dollars in sales, which I think is absolutely ridiculous. People are just, they like what they like. That's great, but that game's dead. It's completely dead. There's nothing new about it. Yeah. <clears throat> I want to, I've got, you know, I wrote down on there, 7.4 million units sold last month. Yep. And I'm wondering, because it's, that, that's, that's a combined PS3 and Xbox. I'm wondering if there's a big split, so... Uh, I know when I waited in line for it, that even pissed me off even more. The Xbox side was probably three fourths longer than the uh, PlayStation, or excuse me, about three times longer than the PlayStation side. Yeah, that's what I was I guessed. So I'm assuming it's more Xbox than PlayStation. Yeah, yeah, I would go with the same guess. But no, thanks for sharing your input and and, uh, <clears throat> and, uh, and your passion, passionate man. So. All right. Well, um, moving on to the DOB questions. <clears throat> this is where, and this is this is the public service announcement that uh, you can ask serious or funny questions to about to and for about the clan. If you have questions for specific individuals or how certain things operate, or things that we could do, ideas, thoughts that you'd like to get onto this podcast. Sexual it's fantasies. Sexual fantasies. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, remember that one you and I did, Josh? Oh, man. Oh, yeah, that was, it was, it was for, sweat, dry and bloody. And it was all for Darst. <laughs> <laughs> that so, was a birthday present. Yeah, it was cute of us. So, <laughs> well, we do have two questions, and I do not uh, I do not forget our fans here. So, um, so from Phil's a lot <clears throat> to Two Steel, are they stainless? Well, I've, I've already answered this question in game. Um, there's, they're, uh, I, I call them steel, not stainless steel, just because they don't have as much of, uh, I think it's nickel that makes steel more stainless. Um, <laughs> so, more steel. So, i got to be careful they don't rust a little bit during the moisture down there. Don't want any jungle nuts with your, uh, your steel. There's a, there, I will say this, though, from uh, being, you know, eye on eye level with them. They are, uh, <laughs> they have a nice sheen to them. So, he, he keeps them polished up. Well, got to keep them buffed as much as possible. Exactly. I mean, I could, like, you know, do my hair in them. It's wonderful. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so, and to Josh, this one's from you, from Phil's a lot. <clears throat> Bring it on. What size are your implants? Uh, well, that depends. I mean, uh, I wanted smaller balls, so although those are tiny. Um, I wanted a large chin <laughs> to resemble Jim Carrey from me, myself, and Irene. Uh, the breasts... <laughs> Um, you know, however, I, I got them just big enough to where I could jiggle them and you know, mash them together. Uh, <laughs> and the butt implants, well, I mean, I'm stacked like J-Lo. So, I mean, I'm all over around a really weird-looking male. All right? So, use your imagination on that one, Phils. <laughs> Appreciate it, though. Yeah. Oh, and uh, uh, I have hydraulic press in the, uh, in the in the lower man area. Yeah. I got I to gotta do it good for mothers. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> and from Santa Claus Eight. <laughs> That's a nice transition. I have a hydraulic wiener, and now, now, now from Santa Claus. <laughs> and now to hear one from Santa Claus. Let's sit on this lap here for a second. <laughs> what do you guys want for Christmas? I would like Dark Knight Rises Blu-ray. Mm -hmm. it's three hours of bonus fun. I, up a couple <laughs> days ago. It's worth it. I would like the new Batman. Yes, yes, uh, really good. I got a question for you on that note, on that movie. You've watched it uh, religiously probably and, and uh, <laughs> since you bought it. But uh, <clears throat> at the very end where they show uh, the uh, ex-cop <clears throat> that helps him out, is that, yeah. is, do you think that's supposed to be the uh, uh, future Batman or possibly a, uh, Robin? It is actually going to be the future Batman um, from, again, watching... Uh, Machinima is just great with this and they have a segment called ETC and it's just kind of like entertainment extra stuff mm -hmm. uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt is going to be the new Batman in the uh, Justice League version 
that's supposed to be the next Batman series. Uh-huh. Um, he's not going to be Robin. He's actually going to be the Batman. Um, it's not going to be a Christopher Nolan directed franchise by any means because he's done with that. But he is producing them. So be prepared for Joseph, Joseph Gordon-Levitt to uh, try to up, uh, upsell Christian Bale's performance, which I don't think is going to happen. But again, who thought Heath Ledger would be a good Joker? You know. So. Yeah, I know. Yep. So what do you want for Christmas, Josh? Uh, well, that's easy. Um, I wanted the, uh, an, an updated version of my iPad with the uh, the new Retina display. So we'll see if uh, Santa Claus, aka my wife, um, hooks me up. And if she does, great. If she doesn't. You know, I stopped believing in Santa Claus when I was nine, so I'll just curse the fucker and move on. <laughs> Cry in the corner, suck your thumb underneath the tree. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> All right. Exile, what do you want for Christmas, man? Uh, I think a new phone. My yeah. phone got lost the other day. <laughs> well, that's definitely a need, yeah. <laughs> Did I make a recommendation, Exile? Yeah. The Galaxy Note 2 is amazing. I picked it up when it came out about uh, fifteen or about, about a month ago. I love yeah. it. I, Do you? You know, oh yeah, the screen's the size of a tablet. You know, with the capabilities of phone, wireless internet, everything. Solid yeah, equipment. I went and looked at the S3 the other day. It looked pretty sweet too. Yeah, anything Galaxy wise, uh, you'll be uh, happy with if you go that way. Oh yeah, if you go that way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've got the yeah, droid. The Call of Duty of phones, aka the iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the uh, the Motorola Droid Razor Max. Ooh, the Max, do yeah. The Max, and wow, wow. <laughs> Does the maximum cool. penetrate you? You have no idea. And that little little vibrator inside there is phenomenal. <laughs> yeah, there's the uh, the. Obviously, with the uh, Jet Next Gen phones, they have several types of ringers. Well, yeah, uh, with the Note 2, they have several types of vibrations. <laughs> and I have mine on heartbeat. So every time I get a text or a call, it vibrates like a heartbeat. So I, I quickly sit on it, you know, <laughs> place it correctly uh, uh, beneath my uh, taint and or filch, <laughs> however you call it, and uh, have a little thrill ride. So another purpose of these they're gigantic phones. So that's why XL, you should get that Galaxy. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got the, the taint reverberator. All right. That's it. <clears throat> loosens me up. That loosens me up, boys. God. All right. Well, um, this does conclude the 13th episode of uh, DOB's WTF cast. Um, definitely want to thank our special guest, XL. Thanks for having me. Josh, as always. Take care of yourself. Thank you. Yeah. You know, I'm sorry. I bring the gayness. Um, but uh, I appreciate you having me back. And uh, we'll, it'll be a lot uh, sooner than a month before our next recording. For everybody, um, you know, if you've got, uh, if you've got, I think you've got the voice that uh, definitely I don't have right now. Um, <clears throat> and you want to get out there, you know, message me, two still balls. Um, and see, maybe you want to get involved with the commentaries. I know there's a few of you out there that are, that are just... Uh, uh, pants, pants, weddingly fun. So, mm-hmm. um, so we'll get that going as well. And that's it, man. Everybody, keep trucking and fight together as brothers, bears alone as fools. See you later. Some of the is other that just, is that just a like a Super Mario platform type game? I mean, I'm uh, side scroller. I'm thinking, or am I completely off base on that? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna tell you in just a second here. Kept caught oh, me off guard. Thinking, I mean, it, <laughs> um, I played. I just missed the side scroller, so I'm actually looking for a really good one. Okay, well, um, Sly, Sly Cooper is not a side scroller. Then fuck it, I'm not buying it. <laughs> it turns out that it is a, yeah. Uh, um, Jesus, you got me off guard again. This is sick. <laughs> My God, I'm never, I'm really not feeling good. So was, uh, were you, you robo tripping or NyQuil? Uh, Jeez. No, you're all right, man. You can, you can <clears> end <throat> this all day long. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to sleep. Uh, uh...
<laughs> Do you want me to ask you the question again? <laughs> no. Uh, Joshy. We lost him again. Jesus Christ. Oh, it's amazing, Exile. <laughs> this has never happened before. This is because it's the third, <laughs> it's the 13th episode. That's why. <laughs> <laughs>